Hello and welcome to L8 Tutorials and Tips. My name is Alex Hughes and today we're going through the first steps in getting into L8. So we're going to jump in. We've loaded up the software. I'm using L8 uh, Unlimited here, but this tutorial applies for all the, uh, all the software package because the interface is pretty much the same. At the time of recording, we're using version 60.9 and this is version 60 has been out for roughly 24 hours uh, but most of what you see covered here is also in older versions as well so let's quickly jump in we've got two modes that we can use we can start onboard control which essentially allows you to use the software as a lighting control system but for i would say 90 percent of the users we're going to start with visualization only so that's how we can bring a desk in So here we have the L8 software interface. We can see we've got a compass on the right hand side and if we run our mouse over it we can rotate around. Down the bottom we've got a list of universes and we can also see the status of them. So here we can see we've got Artnet Universe 0 and we can see we're not getting anything. But if we look at Universe 9 which is SACN1 currently we can see that we've got DMX traffic because I've got a Grand MA lighting desk connected. But before we get excited about lights Let's jump in and start setting up our room. So to set up our room objects, we click in the room section at the top. And we can see that our house lights go to full. And now we want to add in a bit of truss. So if we go into symbols, we'll find a bit of truss here. And then select it. And we can see that it's brought it in. We can see it's directly in the dead center of the room. And we can also see that it says its altitude is zero. That's not entirely true, so the other thing that we want to do is we want to set where the world center object is. By default, there's nothing bound, but we want the world center of the object to be the floor here. You could also set it to the stage height once you've dropped the stage in, and this will allow you to use it for measurements off the top of, off this top of the stage. So now we can see that if we click on our truss, it comes up in the bottom left hand corner here, and we can see that it's two meters high. So let's drag it across and we can see that it's three meters. So let's put us at minus three and then let's add two. We can use the duplicate tool to put an object directly on top of the other one. And we can see our first object starts flashing zero and we can drag across with our mouse or we can click in the calculator section and just type in the number that we want. So here we want zero and we put it there. We've got X, Y and altitude positions. So Y would be, you know, forwards and backwards. Sorry, Y would be uh, horizontal, sorry, vertical. Wow, I'll get that right. Apologies, everyone. And X would be our X axis here. So other than that way, we can also snap together objects by using our little tool menu on the right-hand side. The tools that we've got on the right-hand side are a tape measure, where we can just drag between two points to see the length of things. And here we can see that this little bit of truss is roughly three meters. Why we're seeing the six is because the truss is see-through. We're actually measuring to the back wall. So when we touch something that's a solid object, like this bit of webbing on the truss, we can see that it goes to three meters. Next, we've got the position tool where we can drag fixtures around, which is slightly easier. And it's got the added benefit of when we bring objects close to each other, they'll actually snap together. We've got a rotate tool, which allows us to rotate objects on their axes. And we're gonna use the uh, undo function to go back so that we can zero it back to zero. We've then got the plus one option and we can see that we get little lines. So if we click here, it's gonna create a carbon copy of that one directly next to the other one. Other than that, we've also got a manipulation, manipulation tool where we can change the scaling of objects. And we'll use our undo tool again. And then we've got a full rotational pull as well. So now we've got our three trusses. We're going to click on one. And the first selection selects the first object. But if I tap twice, we can see that all three of them are selected. We can also select them down in the bottom left-hand corner, like so. And we can give them an altitude. 
So let's put them at three meters and we're going to click save to save the file. Now we're going to add in some lights. To add in lights, we go to the DMX menu and we use the browse tool. The lighting library is broken down into three separate sections. As we can see, we've got moving head, scanner and fixed. We also have projector, no light, camera and pattern, as well as no 3D. These are used for other types of fixtures that may not be related directly to lights. On top of that, we've also got a user library and a database library. In future tutorials, we'll come back to those. But for those that wonder, basically this is a location that we can store a fixture in that is separate from the system library. And you'd use this for things where you've put custom gobos into, or you've modified a fixture. Maybe the profile isn't correct, or maybe you just need to make a slight tweak to the zoom range. You can save it here, and then when we run the update tool, you're not going to have any issues where your old fixtures or your updated custom fixtures are being overwritten. So we're going to go into moving head, and we're going to type in the top Viper, because we want some Martin Vipers. It's always a good light to start with. We're going to grab the performance one, and we're going to grab it in extended mode. Here we can see the Viper performance in extended, takes up 40 channels, or takes up 32. We're going to go extended mode, and we can see that now we've got the fixture. We can then use our positioning tool to snap it to the truss. And when we grab gently on the top arrow, we can see that it snaps. We can then drag it across and position it there. We can then use the duplication tool to duplicate out. Five more lights. And then we can select all of them and go in here and we can type in a value. We can also go greater than six to space all six fixtures across that range. We actually might go with greater than eight so that we get a nice even spacing. We can also see them flashing in the order left to right. This depends on the order that we've got them selected below. So very similar to a lighting desk, if we selected them in a random order, we can see that they're going to strobe in that order. When we come to address them, this is also quite important. When bringing lights into L8, the first thing that we want to do as well is we want to turn off focus. This means that when we plug a lighting desk in, we'll also have DMX control of the focus. If you leave that on, your, your fixtures will always be in focus, no matter what the focus value is or the surface. I like to call this MA3 mode off. So now we can do nice soft gobos. Now we're going to address these fixtures. So we're going to go into DMX input. We're going to select our first universe. And we can see that it's currently set to use DMX1, which would be a physical DMX in. Since we don't have any L8 hardware, we're going to select SACN. We're going to set it to universe 1. And then we're going to click apply to save that. We can also see a preview of all our fixtures patched here. We can see our first one starting on channel one. If we wanted to start them on a different channel, we can just click where we want the start channel to be. If we want to patch them all over the top of each other, we can modify the pitch and drag it to zero. And we can see here that it's in red, but it, which indicates an overlap, but they'll all be patched to the same thing. We're going to set it back to a pitch of 40. Occasionally you're going to see channels that are blanked out like this, but still relate to the first fixture. This normally indicates a feature that Allate doesn't support, or just there's a channel gap that may have been provided by the manufacturer. We can tell which fixture is which by the little number beside them. So our first Viper performance is number one, and then our second one starts on channel 41. Let's click apply for now, and we can also now see a preview of our fixtures patched here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to patch it in our lighting desk, which we'll do off camera. But we'll bring this up anyway. We're not doing an MA tutorial today, but at least what we can do here is we can at least showcase some of the setup as if you were using a desk. So I'm just getting myself set up here. So we're going to go into patch quickly and we're going to patch our vipers. 
Obviously, this depends on the console you're using, but here I'm using an MA, and rather than just cut the video, I'm doing it live. And I'm enabling SACN output so that we can have control of our lights. Now, if we click Save, we're going to see that we've got SACN coming in, in our light, and we can actually program the lights. So if I bring them up on my desk, we can now see that we've got output. And we can pan and tilt them as we would in real life. If we don't have a lighting desk, when we leave DMX mode, we can actually select the lights and access some of their parameters directly. So we can see that we can change the color here. We can also use the radar tool. So we select radar and then collect, select a position in our 3D space and all our lights will pan and tilt to that position. With our light, most of the features that you would see in the real light are shown. For example, we've got gobos which as we described before, can be softened and focused. We've got the zoom parameter. And if your fixture has shutters, let me just drop the gobo. We can also see shutters. Prisms also work with rotation. If we want to set any of these parameters back, we simply just need to right click in them and they'll return to their default values. Now that we've got some lights in there, let's add a little bit of staging. So we'll go browse 3D model this time and we'll select one of our stage decks from stage decks and we'll find a nice steel deck here. By default, it comes in and sits on the floor. Now obviously the room that we've got here is great it's a 10 by 4, well, 10 by 10 by 4, but we might a little bit more ceiling height, especially if we've got a stage here, because if we put a performer on top of it, they're going to hit their head. So let's put a performer here, and we see that she's in the truss. That's not going to be very good. So down in the bottom right-hand side, when we're in room mode, we can adjust the height of the room. Again, using the calculator, we can set the height of the room as desired, and we can also change the width and length. When building, it's nice to have all of your surfaces labeled, which is what they default to by having them called black, back, left, front, ceiling, and floor. But if we want to change this, we can go all the way down in the bottom of our thing or click on one of the objects while in room, and we can bring up our material menu. By just clearing the texture, the walls return to just flat, and if we turn the diffusion off, they turn to black. Now if we come out of this mode, we can see that we're just in a black box room. Obviously, we'd like to raise this truss up, and we can do this a couple of ways. We can grab every single object, and we can raise it up manually, but that's a bit of a pain. So what we can do is we can use the layer function. So we'll select all three bits of our truss. We're going to click on layer. We're going to select layer one. And we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it T1. And we're going to click Apply. We're going to do the same in DMX. So again, I'm going to double click on one of my lights and select them all. We're going to click Layer, assign it to Layer 1, and click Apply. Now, if we go back, we save, and we go back to Room. Down the bottom, we've got these layer options. So if now we click from object into position, we see now we've got our layer selected. And when we have our layer selected, we can change the altitude. So let's bring it up a couple of meters to here. And then we can click two objects to save it to this location. And now when we save, we can see that the object has shifted all as one object. Layers are a great feature because we can actually also like in a CAD program, turn them on and off as required if we're working on different bits of a rig. While in here, this is also a good opportunity to show you how we can really do nice flat 
or side trusses easily. With everything grouped, rotation now works as one single object. So now we can put it on a 90 degree angle and put it over here and then change the altitude. And then again, if we click two objects, we can save it. And now we can see we've got all our lights as a vertical truss. This is just a taste of what we can do in L8. If you want more information, have a look at our other videos that are either already out or coming very soon that will give you a much better explanation of some of the other features. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, have a look at the resources available in the bottom section and comments of this video. Thanks.